In this video, we are going to learn kinematics, a chapter of IGCSE O-level physics. You will be able to accomplish a firm grip on the concepts on the concepts related to kinematics. I am an experienced online physics tutor and have done thorough research on these concepts of IGCSE physics. So, let's begin kinematics. This is our second chapter of O-Level Physics and the content that we will cover in kinematics will be related to speed, velocity and acceleration. Moreover, we will study the graphical analysis of motion graphical analysis of motion as well as the free fall motion so let's begin by defining the speed and velocity and also we'll uh, see the uh, difference between speed and velocity as well speed speed is the rate of change of distance the rate of change of distance is speed or we can say speed is equal to distance over time now the unit of speed the unit of speed is meter per second moreover speed speed has some magnitude but it does not have any direction because uh, distance is a scalar quantity time is also a scalar quantity so scalar divided by scalar becomes scalar quantity so speed is also scalar quantity okay now coming towards the velocity Velocity is just like speed, but velocity is a vector quantity, but speed is a scalar quantity. So, the rate of change of displacement is velocity. And we can write it as velocity is equal to displacement divided by time okay so this was speed and velocity it has also same unit meter per second but velocity is a vector quantity you can see displacement as vector time is scalar so vector over scalar becomes vector so velocity is a vector quantity this is the difference between speed and velocity now now we have to recall what is average speed So let's first understand what is average speed. Average speed. Um, let's suppose a person travels from city A 
to city B in four hours, and the distance between city A and city B is four hundred kilometers. So, but in between, in between moving from city A to city B, maybe uh, he might stop somewhere. He might be uh, accelerating his car, or he might be like slowing down his car. He might be applying brakes. So, the speed of of the person throughout this journey will be will 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 kept on varying. But now. Uh, we have to find a particular number like what will be the like average speed during the whole journey so in order to find the average speed we just uh, divide whole total distance divided by total time that uh, he has taken for this journey so average speed will be equal to total distance over total time So total distance is 400 kilometers and total time is 4 hours. So the average speed would be 100 kilometer per hour. In this way you can find out the average speed of any object moving from one point to another. After this um, I will explain the concept of uniform acceleration but before that I'll tell you what is acceleration okay so acceleration the time rate of change of velocity is acceleration acceleration is equal to velocity divided by time now before telling you either acceleration is a vector quantity or a scalar quantity just comment in the video what will be uh, which quantity will it be a scalar or vector okay now I tell you velocity as I told you it's a vector quantity time is a scalar quantity so vector divided by scalar quantity the answer will be a vector quantity so we can say the acceleration is a vector quantity now what if we have to determine the units of acceleration the units of velocity is meter per second unit of time is second so the unit will be meter divided by second square so we can say the unit of acceleration is meter per second square so this is acceleration now acceleration is directly proportional to the change in velocity what do you mean by change in velocity if the velocity of an object is increasing that means it is accelerating its acceleration is increasing if the velocity of an object is decreasing then we can say the acceleration is decreasing or we can say this object is decelerating the opposite of acceleration is deceleration from here I tell you the concept of uniform acceleration uniform acceleration what is a what is uniform acceleration
if the velocity of an object increases equally in equal intervals of time then the object has object has uniform acceleration let's suppose i draw a graph over here in this graph in the x axis there is time and the y axis there is velocity okay there are some certain intervals of time let's say 5 10 15 20 25 and some certain intervals of velocity 10 20 30 40 if initially the object has zero velocity after 5 seconds its velocity become equal to 10 meter per second so object comes over here after that after more 5 seconds that means 10 seconds its velocity increases by 10 meter per second as well so at 10 seconds the velocity become equal to 20 meter per second at 15 velocity became equal to 30 meter per second and at 20 seconds velocity became equal to 40 meter per second so we can see a straight line over here this is the graph of uniform acceleration the acceleration of an object is uniform it is constant that means its velocity is increasing equally in equal intervals of time so this is the concept of uniform acceleration on the other hand non uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration what will it be here if the velocity of an object increases or decreases randomly in equal intervals of time then the object has non uniform acceleration non uniform acceleration now i also make a graph over here in the x axis there is time and y axis there is velocity 5 10 15 20 5 10 15 20 10 20 30 40 in first 5 seconds velocity is 10 meter per second and next 5 second velocity remains constant in next 5 seconds velocity increases by 20 meter per second and became equal to 30 meters per second and after that it remain constant in next 5 seconds so the graph will be like this it's not a straight line so here 
the acceleration of the object is not uniform so we can say it's a graph of non uniform acceleration because velocity is not increasing or decreasing equally in equal intervals of time it is increasing or keeping constant randomly okay if you have any confusion regarding the concept of uniform acceleration or non uniform acceleration just do comment me in the video and if you have uh, understood the concepts what i have told you just uh, like this video share and subscribe to my channel i'll uh, i'll be putting a lot of stuff related to o level igcse physics including the past papers as well now we'll discuss the concept of deceleration or negative acceleration we can say negative acceleration i define it as, it as if the velocity of an object decreases in equal intervals of time then the object so we have written the two times then the object has negative acceleration or deceleration negative acceleration and deceleration are the same uh, terms now i explain it uh, graphically here is x axis time in y axis there is velocity 5 10 15 20 20 seconds 10 20 30 40 meter per second 5 10 15 okay initially the object was moving at a velocity of 40 meter per second so after 5 seconds its velocity decreases by 5 meter per second and it kept on moving at 30 meter per second in next 5 seconds it came at the value of 20 meter per second and in next 5 seconds 5 meter per second and in next 5 seconds the velocity the object stopped and its velocity became equal to 0 now if we join these dots like this there will be a, will be a straight line but the gradient of the straight line is negative so if the gradient of the straight line of a velocity time graph is negative it means that the object has a negative acceleration or it is decreasing so in this case the object velocity is decreasing equally in equal intervals of time so this object has negative acceleration or deceleration okay so this is the concept of uh, negative acceleration okay so now we will discuss the distance time graph and velocity time graph or you can say speed time graph in this chapter so first of all let's start off with distance time graph distance time graph 
in this graph on the x-axis this time on the y-axis there is distance okay if uh, if the distance of an object is increasing with uh, increasing interval of time then the graph will be like this if is distance is time if the object is um, at some constant constant distance for equal interval of time the graph will be like this time distance if the distance of an object is increasing with increasing uh, increasing exponentially with increasing time and the graph will be like this now from this distance time graph we get the information of speed how how we can determine the speed from this distance time graph speed as we all know is equal to distance over time so the gradient of distance time graph gives us the speed so I can write it over here the gradient of distance time graph gives us the speed now what we have to do in order to find the speed from any graph let's suppose this is a straight line we write take two points on this line let's suppose the coordinates of this point is 5 5 and the coordinates of this point is 20 and let's suppose 8 so how we can find out the gradient the formula for the gradient will be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so y2 minus y1 means the difference of y coordinates so the difference of y coordinates is 8 minus 5 that is 3 divided by the difference of x coordinates so 20 minus 15 it will be 15 so the gradient is 1 over 5 that will be equal to 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 meter per second is the velocity is the speed of this object as shown in this graph now if the gradient is a constant value the speed is constant if the gradient is 0 the speed will be 0 in this graph if we take the gradient of this straight line it will be 0 so the speed of the object in this distance time graph is 0 and over here if we take gradient of this curve how we can take the gradient we'll just mark three points over here and draw a tangent on these marks the gradient of this line is less than the gradient of this line and the gradient of this tangent is less than the gradient of this tangent now the gradient of uh, this graph is increasing hence we can say the speed is increasing okay so this is how distance time graph works the bottom line is the gradient of distance time graph gives us the velocity gives the speed the gradient of distance time graph gives the 
speed okay so now i'm going to discuss a very important graph that is speed time graph uh, this speed time graph basically gives us the information about the acceleration and the total distance covered by an object while moving so is the y axis is the x axis and x axis there is it is time i have represented it by t over here it is speed or you can say velocity so let's suppose these are the time intervals 5 10 15 20 10 20 30 40 10 15 20 10 20 30 40 okay so now the body has started its motion from here in the first five seconds it attained the velocity of 10 meter per second in next five seconds it remained constant and in next five seconds it attained the velocity of 30 meter per second and after that it also remained constant now i mark this point by a b c d and d okay so now i want to find out the acceleration between any two points let's suppose i want to find out the acceleration between point c to d so what i will do i'll just find out the gradient from of the line between point C and D. So in order to find out the gradient, uh, I will know the coordinates of point C and D. So the point C has coordinates 10, 10, point D has coordinates 15, 30. So the gradient will be y2 minus y1 that means 30 minus 10 divided by x2 minus x1 that is 15 minus 10 so it will be 20 divided by 5 uh, so it will be 4 meter per second square so 4 meter per second square is the acceleration between point c to d so from here we have deduced that the gradient of a speed time graph tells about acceleration okay now what about the area under the graph this area this whole area this whole area that is under this speed time graph this tells us about the total distance covered by the object now let's uh, find out the total distance covered by the object so in order to find out the total distance we just have to find out on this shaded area under the graph so i just divide it in triangles and rectangles and find out the area and then just sum it up okay so total area will be equal to area of this rectangle 1 over 2 into base that is 5 into height that is 10 plus this area of this rectangle 5 is length height is 10 so 5 into 10 plus area of this rectangle 5 is the width height is 10 plus area of this triangle that is half into 5 that is base and 20 that is height plus area of this rectangle so 5 into 30 
so the total area will be equal, will become equal to 1 over 2 into 5 into 10 that will be 25 plus 50 plus 50 plus 20 into 5 over 2 that will be equal to 50 plus 150 so the answer will be 200 250 300 325 meters so total area is 325 so total distance as the total area is equal to the total distance covered so the total distance will be equal to 325 meters so in this way we can use any speed time graph to find out the acceleration and total distance covered the bottom line is the gradient of speed time graphs tells us about the acceleration and the area under speed time graph tells us about the total distance if you have any confusion related to this speed time graph or distance time graph just comment down in the video I'll surely reply your comment or reply your question now uh, from these graphs we can determine whether a body is at rest or it is moving with a uniform speed or moving with a uniform acceleration or non-uniform acceleration so I'm gonna draw speed time graph some speed time graphs this is time this is speed and we'll try to find out about the information of acceleration and uh, speed okay so first of all state increasing line a horizontal line state decreasing line increasing curve and a decreasing curve okay from these graphs um, how we can identify the information of speed and uh, acceleration from number one this is an increasing straight line so speed is increasing with the increasing time so we can say speed v or velocity increasing what about the acceleration if we take a gradient of this line it will be a constant value a fixed value so over here acceleration is uniform it's constant graph number two it's a horizontal straight line so we can say the speed is constant okay speed is constant but the acceleration if you find out the gradient of this line the gradient will be zero so acceleration will be zero for this line okay now graph number three it is a decreasing line so with the passage of time the speed of an object is decreasing from a from a maximum value so we can say the speed is decreasing what about the acceleration if you find out the acceleration if you find out the gradient of this graph it will be a negative value so we can say it's negative acceleration or it's decreasing as acceleration or we can say uh, the body is decelerating so acceleration is negative or decreasing and not decreasing it will be only negative acceleration negative constant acceleration 
okay because there will be a constant negative value so over here there will be a negative constant negative acceleration now coming towards this graph number four over here the speed is increasing exponentially with the increasing time over here if we find the gradient of the tangent on these two points its gradient is more than this one so we can say that uh, gradient of the tangents is increasing so the acceleration of this object is increasing speed it is increasing both acceleration and speed are increasing but speed is increasing exponentially while the acceleration is increasing uniformly acceleration is increasing uniformly that means if over here the acceleration is 2 meter per second square then over here the acceleration would be 4 meter per second square over here it will be 6 meter per second square so excel the value of acceleration is not constant it is constantly increasing now let's have a look at this graph over here the speed is increasing okay but the rate of increasing of, the rate of increase of speed is not constant so we can say over here speed is increasing without a constant rate and what about acceleration if we take if we uh, compare the gradients of three tangents number one number two and number three the gradients are decreasing so we can say as the grade as the gradient of this graph is decreasing so you know that the gradient of uh, this uh, speed time graph is acceleration so acceleration is also decreasing over here acceleration is decreasing let's suppose the object has acceleration over here 5 meter per second square over here it will be 4 meter per second square and might be 3 meter per second square over here so the acceleration is basically decreasing in graph number five any problem regarding these graphs just to let me know in the comment section okay now what if what will be the acceleration of a free fall body it is very important to know the acceleration of a free fall body because it will be helpful for you in the upcoming chapters so the acceleration for a free fall body will be 10 meter per second square in this course or in this syllabus of IGCSC physics or O level physics uh, you have to take the value of gravitational acceleration or free fall acceleration as 10 meter per second square we represent this acceleration from small g that will be 10 meter per second square okay after that uh, I will discuss the motion of free falling objects in the presence of air resistance and in the absence of air resistance as well okay so let's suppose there's an object falling from a cliff and another object falling from another cliff these are two different systems okay in this system there will be air resistance 
and in this system there will be no air resistance what happens here in system 1 when the object will fall from a cliff its acceleration will increase it will keep on increasing and it will fall with the acceleration of g that will be equal to 10 meter per second square similarly over here this object will fall with the same acceleration 10 meter per second square now here after some time the air resistance will come into play and uh, in the presence of this air resistance this acceleration will not remain 10 meter per second square it will decrease so if I make the graph it will be like speed time initially the speed will increase rapidly but after some time it will decrease and finally it will become constant so in in the scenario where object will fall in the presence of air resistance the graph will be like this over here acceleration will be maximum and after some time when the speed will increase the air resistance will um, the air resistance will push the object upward and it will not be able to accelerate at 10 meter per second square and after some time it um, the speed will become constant and the acceleration will become minimum zero this will be the scenario and uh, where the where system has some air resistance okay and uh, the speed or velocity at this point will be called terminal velocity this is the maximum velocity an object can attain when it is thrown uh, when it, it is thrown from a cliff in the presence of air resistance now in the second scenario here there is no air resistance so when object is uh, thrown from a cliff it will kept on increasing its acceleration by 10 meter per second square so its graph will be like this this straight line has a constant value of 10 meter per second and the value of gradient of this straight line will be 10 meter per second square and it will kept on increasing increasing and increasing till infinity so these are the two uh, scenarios and where an object is thrown in the presence of air resistance or in the absence of air resistance so the bottom line is in the presence of air resistance after some time the object will uh, attain a constant terminal velocity where the acceleration will become equal to zero but in the presence of in the absence of air resistance the um, acceleration of the object will remain constant and its speed will kept on increasing with the passage of time so if you have any confusion regarding uh, this free fall motion of the object just do let me know in the comment section and uh, after this we are we have done with the chapter 2 of igcsc o level physics the name of the chapter is kinematics and um, in the next video i'll be explaining other chapters of igcsc o level physics thank you